Now, interesting enough, a viewer recently wrote into us saying that their child wants to become a pro gamer. So the very concerned mom wrote to us and asked us, what do we think of this? Maybe we should ask Grant, what are the prospects of a professional gamer out there in the world? Shouldn't the child be studying something in the line of medicine, law, be perhaps becoming the next Harry Nell? Um, you know, so Grant, thank you for coming in. And he's brought in some friends as well. We've got uh, Nick, we've got, uh, I'm, I'm reading other names here, Pupski, uh, Congo Kyle, and Holden Z. Of course, these are the names that these guys use in a game called, uh, called your, your gaming names. Yeah. In general, so, right? So we've got profession, professional gamers from yes. different backgrounds and different gaming professions yes. in South Africa. So that's the exciting part. Yeah. So these guys make a part of their lives and a part of their careers currently uh, in the gaming world and as professional gamers. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, our man over here, the pro himself, G Funk Delicious, <laughs> on the ones and twos. All right. So wait, who's called Pupski? Is, is that <laughs> no, Pupski? Me. That's a very no, cool no. name. Thank Tell you. me first, how long must one train to compete internationally? Because that's what you do. You, you, uh, you've got South African colors in. Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to take a few years. Um, for a player to compete internationally, they're actually going to, you know, take a couple of years just to feel out like the competition internationally, you know. Um, they're going to have to become, you know, top of the country and then they can start thinking about competing internationally. So yeah. it's going to take definitely a while. Yeah. So but Lusanda was, was the mom that, that emailed us in. Um, and so you, you got to, uh, this was part of your field of expertise, right? Yeah, no, it was very interesting that we had that, and I was quite, uh, uh, I was quite excited that there yeah. was a lot of positive uh, feedback from viewers out there who want to get involved in gaming and who understand the benefits of gaming. It's not just this pastime that is deemed unproductive. It is yeah. a competitive thing. And Popsky is a great example. We were in LA together for the Call of Duty champs, yeah. so and that was cool. He played for South Africa. See the South African badge over there. Do you, you know, have to go and see Sigilet before the start of the game. Uh, fortunately, not. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but Pupski, what point does a player like you, who's taking it professionally as a sport, start making money? Um, again, it's going to take a couple of years. I mean, um, you can actually start making money um, locally. Luckily, we have people running tournaments, you know, people like Mway, people like Holden right here, um, people like Zombie Gamer, 2UP Gamers, they become household names in South Africa. And that's when you can actually start making money, um, even at a local level. Could one actually, I, I was just wondering, when you say it takes a few years, could one substitute those years that you're training with years spent in varsity and be like, well, that's my training to become a professional gamer? Um, I'd say you'd probably have to juggle the two, um, yeah. you know, in case the gaming doesn't work out. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you you can actually get bursaries in some institutions in South Africa for professional gaming, wow. so that's that's a big deal. So, uh, Congo is a big commentator in the Dota scene. I love Dota, we've had Dota on the show. Yeah. How big is Dota as a competitive video game in South Africa? It, at the moment, it's the biggest game, the biggest uh, online game in South Africa uh, in terms of teams registering for some of our biggest tournaments. I think we had a total of about, oh man, I, about 200 plus, I would say about teams. These are teams of five people that signed yeah. up for a tournament, so it is enormous. That's and not to mention the guys who play casually. Yeah, these, though, these are just gamers, a bunch of friends that sign up for these tournaments, and that's just our biggest tournament in South Africa. Uh, there are, of course, a lot smaller tournaments as well, and recreationally, I think we... Yeah, we are right up there in the world with some of the highest sign-ups for a single country. I think we broke the record for the single highest sign-up for a country. Wow. So Dota's a competitive sport internationally. How many people watch this sport online? Uh, online? I mean, just look at some statistics from last year. The International, which is the big competition, yeah. which is almost like the World Cup for uh, Dota 2. They were concurrently close to, I think, about a million people watching on, uh, on the different streams. I mean, there obviously, there are a lot of different uh, languages. You mainly, your main ones will be your English, Russian, French, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so millions of people. I mean, we spoke about the stats earlier, myself and Nick, and I think, I think Twitch TV, which is the major streaming site, have about 45 million views a month. Yeah. Yeah, for different games. I mean, those are many different disciplines, but this Dota 2 specifically, you know, we're averaging anywhere between 10, to 25,000 people for major tournaments watching yeah. online. Yeah. Nick, you, you organize a bunch of these tournaments. Yeah. Um, could you tell me how big is esports in South Africa and is it growing? It's definitely growing. It's growing on a huge rate and really quickly as well, as we've seen a lot of interest from local gamers wanting to get involved in these tournaments. It's very much as uh, Congo and I were saying a bit earlier, it's at the grassroots. Yeah. And um, it's very exciting to see where it's going to go from here. Mm. Yeah, I just want to add to what uh, Nick is saying. Uh, there was a movie released about uh, about a week or two ago, oh, sorry, about a month ago, where they spoke about, um, it was three players, but one of the players' mothers said something that was very important, and I felt it applies to a lot of us. When your child comes to you when you're young, and they come to you and say, oh, mommy, I want to be a professional cricket player. I want to be like Jacques Cullis. You know, you have something to look back on. Mother goes, oh, Jacques Cullis, he's fantastic, great batsman, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But when someone comes to their mother, and they're like, oh, mommy, I want to be a professional Dota 2 player, or I want to be a professional StarCraft 2 player, 
they have nothing to look back on. They this can't look back. So we are the grassroots level. People wow. in about 50 years time will look back on Nick and be like, oh, I want to be a tournament host. I wow. want to be a... I want to be a presenter for gaming, which is relatively new. I mean, no one has these sort of things. So you, you, like, you guys are like the Donald Bradmans uh, <laughs> of, of, of like gaming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks, James. Thank you very much for answering that question. And I hope that uh, our viewer definitely got their answer out there. So you see, it is possible. You can actually make a living as a professional gamer. And like he said, one year, 50 years from now, we'll be saying, oh, remember those guys on Expresso? They were the pioneers <laughs> of it all. But listen, uh, speaking of gaming, uh, we are giving away a copy of Don Brad Gaming or uh, Don Brad uh, Cricket uh, on Xbox 360 and we'll be telling you about those details straight after the break. Stay tuned.